Lights, camera, action. Welcome to the home of the world's most exciting racing. The coming season, we'll see 24 drivers and 12 teams racing through the most iconic cities across the globe. The world's most talented drivers will go head to head, representing the planet's biggest motoring manufacturers in a technological battle for supremacy. The teams are fighting to develop the most advanced systems, not only to win races, but accelerate the development of the technology behind the electric cars that will be hitting the streets. Season 5 of ABB Formula E was the most exciting and unpredictable yet. And although the season might have come to a close, here on Street Racers, we're just getting started. Coming up on this week's show, we'll be heading to Goodwood and catching up with Mahindra as they electrified the famous Festival of Speed. Could the VW IDR break yet another record? This time it takes on the famous Goodwood Hill Climb. He's three seconds up. We'll be checking out what awards the Formula E drivers gave each other in the Boo Emmys. Lucas is definitely the biggest moaner, I think, guaranteed. This year's Games Con event in Germany was home to an exciting esports competition with a special Formula E twist. And finally, we head to the Mercedes Benz Museum in Stuttgart to get up to speed on Mercedes preparations ahead of their entry into the series later this year. But first up, here on Street Racers, we've been keeping a very close eye on motorsport powerhouse Porsche as they've been testing and developing ready for season six. Of course, we made sure we were there when they took the next important step and headed to Porsche HQ in Stuttgart, Germany for the reveal of their first official Formula E car. Today is actually a special day for us. It's the first time we're going to present our car in the new livery. We're going in a digital way how we are presenting uh, the car. Very new, very digital, but I think it's quite cool. Porsche knew they needed to make their car reveal stand out and sought out the help of online streaming platform Twitch to make their vision a reality. How we're going to reveal the car is a really unique proposition, something that we believe um, has never been done in kind of the revealing of a car before. And the way we're going to do it is by putting the, um, the reveal into the hands of the audience. What the audience will do is control the two different drivers and they each have different objectives. So one will find a clue in one place and they'll have to pass it uh, to someone in another place. One will find a fuse box which powers up a, uh, a security room that the other player has to be in. So it's very much we brought the teamwork of Formula E into kind of the construct of this video game that we had created. It's hugely exciting. It's, um, it's a very kind of innovative and unique way of working with a brand to launch a product. Thousands of fans got involved on Twitch and played the game, navigating their way through the stages and finally got a glimpse of Porsche's new electric beast. Here on Street Racers, we got up close and personal to get a sneak peek. Nine Nine X Electric. Uh, I think the design is is very iconic already. It, it, it shows you it's a, it's a Porsche from the design. So really looking forward to driving that car. We have a, a decent package, but is it the fastest? We'll see. Joining Neil Johnny in the Porsche driver lineup is one half of DS Tachita's Season 5 Teams Championship winning duo, Andre Lauderer. Yes, yeah, super excited to be back with the team. I've been a Porsche driver since 2017, so I'm really looking forward to, to hit the track with this car. Yeah, after the Porsche LMP program stopped, um, I had to look for a new challenge and uh, I luckily found a great team, Tachita that welcomed me very nicely and uh, was uh, performing very well and I learned a lot there. Uh, I didn't expect that I would have the opportunity to, to come back to Porsche and then when he came up I realized the decision was not so easy because obviously the team was performing very well and I, I, I liked it. I was happy there, I had a, a great time with my teammate. For sure it's a, it's a bit of a risk in racing for Porsche and create a new future there. I like new challenges so um, I'm sure I'm going to have a great time here too. Yeah, I believe my experience is going to be uh, quite important. Family is something completely different and um, definitely I, I try to bring as much information as possible. You know, you have pressure no matter what. It doesn't matter if you race for a small team or a big team. 
at the end of the day, you have to drive the, the wheels off it. And uh, I'm not starting from zero, so I'm definitely targeting my first win and hopefully uh, better luck with Porsche. I'm definitely very happy having Andre on the on board. Uh, first of all, I've known him for a long time. We've done uh, three times Le Mans together, so we know you know what the other one expects, what he likes, what I like, and and we also challenge each other. But yet we can trust each other. We can't wait, to be honest. We can't wait either, Neil. Season six looks like it could have the best-looking cars and the most exciting racing yet. Ahead of Porsche's car launch, we also headed over to Cologne, Germany for GamesCon, one of the most important events in the gaming calendar, where the biggest gaming companies showcase what they've got coming up. One of the most exciting things at the show was a brand new collaboration between the Porsche Formula E team and one of the most popular mobile racing games in the world. Asphalt Series is a worldwide esports competition on Asphalt 9 Legends. Uh, we, all, we make esports competition on Asphalt Franchise for more than two years, a national competition, and this year, for the first time, we launched the worldwide competition, which is the Asphalt Series. The Asphalt Series 2019 featured the best racers from all around the globe going head to head. Qualifiers and playoffs took place around the world with the best 12 competitors making it to the grand final at GamesCon 2019. The racers were battling for the grand prize of 10,000 euros with 20,000 euros in prizes available. With the competition this exciting, Asphalt knew they needed an extra special car to match there's no better place to get a brand new car than from a brand new Formula E team. The big part of Asphalt is the cars. So we are working a lot for many years, for 15 years, with the car manufacturers to integrate the best cars in the game and offer the best experience to everyone. Porsche is a special partner for us for these many years. We're working with them. Uh, we know that they will release the new Formula E this year. And thanks to Porsche, we are able to create this story and create the link, you know, between the reality and the virtuality what you can have in the game. You're not likely to get the chance to drive a Formula E car in the real world, so it's cool to be able to get behind the wheel in the virtual one. Next up, it's time for a different kind of competition. Previously on Street Racers, we brought you highlights from the Formula E Awards Gala. Now it's time to see what slightly less serious but still important awards the drivers gave out to each other. It's time to check out the Buemis. Probably the one that everyone said it's me, no? Best haircut in Formula E. Oh, <laughs> not me. Oh, that's a tough one. Gary Parfait? <laughs> right. Oh, I'm kidding, I have, the, I have the same problem. Probably Andre Lotterer, he always looks pretty sharp. Andre and Daniel can fight it out for that one. Best hair is Daniel. Daniel Abt. I think it must be Daniel Abt. Maybe Alex Lynn? I still think it's Daniel Abt. It's definitely me. Uh, okay, apart from me. I think uh, Pascal. Pascal. But it's like me and then there's a long time, like he's... Yeah, Pas yeah, I would also say Pascal because he has... Fancy here, let's say, you know, a bit different, like little mushroom. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, best beard. I think if we wanted to grow it, me and me and Jeff could have a pretty good beard off. Uh, Lucas has probably the the most manly one. I think it was Jerome, but he took his beard out. Even Daniel again. Well, I think I also have a good beard, but who else has a good beard? Uh... Yeah, I don't have a crush on him, but you know. Jerome. Jerome. I mean, he's, he's had some impressive beards. I, I'm, I'm, I'm disappointed he's trimmed, actually. Jerome. He's doing this weird stuff with it, but it was working for him, I think. So. Well, I would go for Antonio. I don't know. He, I think he doesn't have it anymore, but... Bro, bro, bro it again, bro. It, you were looking finally like you're over 18. Best dressed driver is... we we'll go to Daniel. Daniel for that one. Puts a lot of effort. He pulls it, pulls it off sometimes, most of the times he pulls it off. Best dressed, I would say it's, uh, it's Jeff. Probably Jeff actually, unfortunately. Yeah, probably him. The two, the cheetah boys. Well, that's us two, but as we can pick like us, I think uh, Jerome. Like, you know, I prefer the, the Jeff and Andre style than the kind of German style. He looks classy, right? He looks old. The best dressed one? I don't know, myself? Uh, 
who might be the funniest guy? Uh, apart from me, of course. Funniest driver is probably Antonio. 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 Da Costa. Uh, probably Antonio. I think Antonio. Um, I think uh, Robin's pretty funny. He's a funny guy. I think my dopey, sleepy teammate is, you know, he's, he's quite a laugh. Can I say myself or not? Uh, Jose Maria Lopez. Uh, Lopez. I think Lopez. He's always joking around, when, even when he's angry. I'm going to have to go with Pechito for that one. You know, I've caught him up on a few after parties and definitely they are not the same thing without him. <laughs> we'll be checking out some more Buemi Awards later in the show. I'm going to give myself an award. Every year, the rolling hills of southern England play host to one of the world's greatest motoring festivals. The Goodwood Festival of Speed is an essential event on the calendar for manufacturers and fans alike. And we caught up with the Mahindra Formula E team as they showed off their Gen 2 car. Hi, I'm Dilbar Gill. We're at the lovely Goodwood today, enjoying ourselves. So I think for us, Goodwood is just coming here to show the car which is fantastic. You never get a chance to show this car in front of 250,000 people over a weekend. And that's amazing because we're talking about electric mobility, we're talking about Formula E. And I think we're just like showcasing that this car is fast up the hill. And it was really fast and that's what we want to continue. Uh, Formula E, Nick Heifel, the course record holder. The evolution of electric mobility. I think people are starting to realize that, that this is a true alternate for them. Radio check. I think Formula E plays a very important role in the world of electric vehicles. But I think the role has changed a little bit now compared to what it was in the beginning. When we started five years ago, the idea was to show people that electric cars don't have to be boring, that they can be fun and that they can be quick. Pascal Behrlein has pole position. <laughs> I think by now this perception is already there, so we don't need to show people. I think now it's much more that manufacturers are coming into Formula E. Next season I think we will have the most manufacturers any big series in motorsport has. We especially have all the big German manufacturers there with BMW, uh, Audi, Porsche and Mercedes. It's only really going to get better as it goes further from here. Yeah, this car is one of the top five or top ten fastest cars that goes up the hill. So I think that's what we're trying to show is that, yeah, the silent car is fast. Porsche isn't the only German heavyweight joining the grid for season six. Automotive giant Mercedes-Benz are also entering the super competitive championship. We're sitting today here in the Mercedes-Benz Museum in, in Stuttgart and around us you can see uh, some 125 years of, of motorsport heritage. For me personally it's like being uh, a kid in a candy shop and it just shows why motorsport itself um, is so important to Mercedes-Benz as a brand. So Mercedes-Benz is coming into Formula E in, uh, in season six. We're incredibly excited about that. For us it's a new chapter in our motorsport history. We are approaching Formula E uh, because for us it's a great showcase again for our new forms of technology for the EQ brand. The key technology or the key area of the car that we can work on is, is within the power unit and the powertrain itself. That gives our engineers a, a great opportunity to showcase um, their skill set. It's also very relevant to what we're doing uh, on the road car side of things at the moment uh, as we move towards electric mobility. I think one of, the, one of the great things about coming to season six is the first time in the history of motorsport that the four premium uh, German uh, automotive manufacturers have been on track together, competing against each other. I think the competition there is going to be fierce, um, but at the same time, it's, it's a great opportunity for us to, to have that in-house competition, if you like, um, and I think it's going to be a huge amount of fun. Unlike Porsche, Mercedes will be entering the championship with some Formula E experience. Their close affiliate HWA entered in season five as a customer team and will now become the full works Mercedes in season six. Coming in in season six as a manufacturer, it's a whole different ball game. Um, so effectively, what we've learned this year has very much been observing how the operational side of things work. But in season six, it really is a, a, a completely 
different uh, setup, a completely different operation. We've got that rich motorsport history and heritage and we can draw on some of those ingredients as we start to put the Formula E team together. So HWA we've, we've discussed and they've, uh, they're obviously going to form an important part of, of the team. And we've obviously got uh, the team at High Performance Powertrains in, uh, in Bricksworth who have over the last few years been developing the Formula One power units are now uh, turning their hand to, uh, to the Formula E power units as well. So those ingredients are going to be absolutely key um, for the team going forward and we'll be cherry picking the best parts of those. Um, the secret's going to be the recipe uh, and that's kind of the job of, of Mercedes-Benz Formula E Limited to find that right recipe. A key ingredient for any successful racing team is highly skilled drivers. Unlike their rivals Porsche, Mercedes are still to announce who will be filling their highly coveted race seats for season six. So driver lineup is quite a, an, an interesting challenge and again having the opportunity to observe things in, in season five it's given us a, an idea of of what skill set you want uh, in your ideal driver. Um, it's too early for us to, uh, to announce exactly who we're going to choose for season six, but we're, uh, we're well on the way to, um, uh, to taking those decisions. Of course, with the new entry into Formula E, the rumour mill has been working overtime. And currently those in the know are putting their money on an exciting combination of HWA Stoffel van Dorn and Dutch hotshot speedster Nick de Vries. We'll be heading to the Mercedes team launch, so make sure you tune in to the next episode to find out who got hired. Earlier in the show, we caught up with Mahindra as they showed off their Formula E car at the Goodwood Festival of Speed and spoke to driver and Goodwood record holder, Nick Heidfeld. In 1999, Nick set the Goodwood Hill Climb record in a Formula One car with an amazing time of 41.6 seconds. So I hope it's going to last for a while, that reckon. 20 years later, the record still stands. In 2018, Volkswagen developed a brand new all-electric racing car with just one purpose, to break records. The VW IDR first went to Pikes Peak, Colorado, where it became the fastest ever car in the race to the clouds. Next up was the Nordschleifer, where the IDR broke the electric car record by over 40 seconds. Fast forward to the summer of 2019 at Goodwood. Nick Heidfeld's 20-year-old record of 41.6 seconds to beat. Could the Volkswagen IDR go fastest? Now let's see what Roman Dumas can do. Through the first corner, this all-electric Volkswagen IDR kicks up the dirt on the inside of the second turn. Now onto the park straight and up towards Malcolm. Every time I say it, you look out the window and he's arriving so fast. And by the time you've looked out to see where he is, he's three seconds up at the first intermediate. He's going to go fastest. The question is, can he go quicker than yesterday? Can this car get into the 40s? That was his aim after yesterday. I think the answer is going to be yes. He's taken even more time out of Jeremy Smith's top time. 36, 37 on the clock. He's up to the timing line. Is he going to get it below 40? Yes, Whoa. he is! A 39.90. The fastest ever time up the Goodwood Hill. What a run. And what technology to help him on his way. Brilliant effort. We had a good run, good weather, shiny, not like today. So it was the right time to do it, right temperature, good tarmac. But uh, you need uh, everything, you know, to perform. And uh, yeah, it was a good time. I, I enjoyed a lot driving the car, it was fun. So at the end, you know, everything was in this run. The car was perfect. Uh, great pleasure to drive this car. You know, this car with the electric engine is very powerful. Uh, for sure you have no gears, so you have to readapt a little bit your driving style compared to a normal combustion engine. But yeah, we proved yesterday that uh, an electric car can be really, really fast. We also proved that uh, this kind of car can match any combustion engine now. But for sure, this car can go as quick as any car. The IDR beat the previous time by 1.7 seconds. And with another record broken, the most important question is surely, what's next for the VW IDR? <laughs> right. 
With the VW IDR setting records and winning awards, it's time to check out more of the equally important and prestigious Buemis. He's doing a story when you have a 24-year-old teammate. They're, they're Instagramming. I'm learning. I'm learning. You're teaching me. Social media obsessed driver. I mean, it's, it's a tight battle. Apt. Oh, Daniel. 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 I would also say it's me, but uh, uh, if it's not me... Daniel Apt. Apt, yeah. Let's say... Let's say Jeff. Maybe Jeff. I think so far Jeff. Jeff is, is strong. I mean, it's got a, a big crew around him, but yeah. Biggest Mona. Wow, there's a lot of them. Jeff. Jeff. I would probably say Jeff as well. This Da Costa really has been the stupidest driver ever, seriously. What are they doing? Are they on holiday, the marshals, to remove the car? I mean, can it be any slower to remove a car, for God's sake? Car hasn't moved. I guess oh, Buemi, yeah, I'm sad, yeah. Uh, I love it when Buemi moans. Buemi. J'ai plus d'énergie! J'ai plus d'énergie! C'est ce que je t'ai dit, on s'est trompé. C'est pas possible, purée! De Grassi. De Grassi. Still. Oh no, now I think it's Lucas De Grassi. Probably Lucas. <laughs> Sorry, Lucas. Oh. I mean, I can say it because I think you won't be surprised, but Lucas is definitely the biggest moaner, I think, guaranteed. Lucas, yeah, Lucas, yeah, okay. Uh, Lucas. Because I forgot about Bern, so it's definitely up there. But this is wrong. No, it's correct. This is completely wrong. wrong. This is we will not yeah, but it's enough. completely wrong. Lucas, we will not argue with that. I understand, but it's completely wrong. That's just Lucas, you know. But <laughs> now goes Roland at the inside into second place. Most underrated this year. Uh, yeah, me, I think. Maybe Oli. Oli Roland. Well, probably I would say uh, Gunther. Do you know what, I'm going to go with Gunther. I think that he's come in under the radar and, and done a pretty decent job. Nice little lap here from Maxi Gunther, out across the line, and it's going to be quickest. That was the guy we hired here, very mature, looked like a veteran. I, I, I would say again, my, my teammate Oliver. Oliver Turvey. Oliver Turvey? Probably Oliver Turvey. Oliver Turvey? Uh, Turvey? I think he's a strong driver and, and you know, when everything goes right, I think he'll be up there. Uh, Gary Puffett. Gary Puffett. Gary Puffett with a brilliant lap. Actually, I'm going to stick with me. I'm going to give myself an award. Gary Puffett, the most underrated driver in Formula E. Well, that's nearly all we've got time for. But before we go, it's time to dive into the world of social media. Something hot was cooking between Jeb and ex-teammate Andre Lauderer as the bromance continued. Jeb said, tell me, who looks at you this way? It seems Jandre will never die. Sounds like true love to me. Formula E founder Alejandro Agag was in the Arctic as Greenland was confirmed as one of the five climate-threatened locations to feature in the pioneering all-electric off-road racing series Extreme E. The championship will commence in 2021. Formula E dropped the latest images of Audi Sports Season 6 car. That's one stunning new livery. Oliver Rowland shared his delight at being reunited with Season 2 champion Sebastian Buemi for next year. Will the Nissan boys be one of the front runners in Season 6? We'll find out at Race 1 in Saudi Arabia on November 22nd. That's all for this week's episode of Street Racers, but make sure to join us next time as we check out more at GamesCon. Head to the Frankfurt Motor Show to see what amazing new EVs are on display. And head to Seoul, South Korea to take a look at where the brand new Formula E track will be for season six. See you next time, Street Racers. <laughs>